So, Wes, thank you for joining me on the show today. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Andy, thanks for having me on, buddy. I know we've talked for a long time, so it's good to to see see you face to face and it kind of chat with you. Uh, so, for those of the, those of you who do not know, I'm Wesley. Uh, I operate Super Essie. Uh, Super Essie is a kind of a survival business where we we started out making bracelets, paracord bracelets. Everyone knows about that, um, and then we kind of branched off from there. Uh, so the the idea for a bracelet came back when I was in the army. Um, so I was psychological operations. Um, we were deployed and kind of on some downtime. I made since we had paracord, since we were airborne, I had paracord. So I made some bracelets and I put some gear inside of them, like fishing kits, compass, things like that. You know, in case we kind of get lost out there somewhere. And it's one of those things. When I got home, I had mine. I posted a picture on some Facebook prepper group, and people started asking would I make them. And that's kind of how Super Essie started. But yeah, about myself, as I mentioned, former Army. Um, for eight years, I was in PSYOP. Uh, the last three years, I was an instructor. So I taught new people reclassified into the MOS. Uh, and then I shifted into law enforcement. Uh, I'd already got my criminal justice degree before I went to the Army. So I kind of did it backwards. Um, <laughs> so when I got out of the Army, that's when I became a law enforcement officer, which I did for eight years. And I just quit that last year to do Super SE full time. So awesome. Here I am connecting with good folks like you. Yeah, man. It sounds like you've had uh, an interesting life so far. And by the way, you know, taking a look at all the stuff on your website, those paracord things, man, I don't see how you get like like the fishing gear into it. And I, it's it's magic, man. It's it's really something to look at because I've made like paracord stuff with my kid. And yeah. yours is like 10 times better than anything I could ever do on my own. So if you're listening, make sure you check that out. But one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, and, and I think your experience speaks to this, is we see the term gray man all over social media, all yeah. over you know the internet. And there's always varying like definitions and what it is. And people kind of misinterpret what it means. Like you got to wear like gray all the time, that sort of thing. That's not quite it. Kind of give us an overview of what a gray man is. Well, I mean, for most of us who even have an introductory understanding of the word, the first thing you think of is the concept of blending in. Mm -hmm. I think that's what whatever definition you're looking at, it's it's that concept, blending in with your environment, um, which usually people just stop at the whole idea of clothes. Uh, blending in is wearing the clothing of those the majority of those in your environment. So if 51% are wearing clown suits and you're wearing a tuxedo, <laughs> you're going to stand out. Right. Um, you know, more realistically, it's like going to Walmart and you're wearing a nice suit. You might stand out versus other people who are just wearing jeans and a t-shirt. Um, but it goes beyond that, just the clothing concept. It's, it's about your behaviors, it's about the way you're acting. You know, if you're in an area and people hear a gun like maybe you're in a bad area and a gunshot goes off somewhere in the background if everyone else is just like yeah just another day and don't react but then you're like what's going on you know it's going to draw attention to you that you're not from right. this area you're not used to hearing that so adapt to the behavior of those around you as well but what i don't see in most of the definition of what a gray man is is beyond that just kind of standard clothing and behavior adaption it's it's also that that situational awareness of everything that's going on, not just around you, but the awareness uh, on a knowledge level of doing pre-research about the area you're about to be working in or going mm -hmm. to. Um, so it goes deeper. It's it's more about knowing what the threats are in the area, what the potential threats could be, I should say, and either avoiding them or using that, that foreknowledge to react uh, preemptively. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things you talked about, you know, a lot of people think of clothing and things like that. When I have traveled for a long time, and I, I do the same with my family, um, I don't want people to know that I'm not from that area. So we just kind of will dress in, you know, just like a, a Nike shirt or Eddie Bauer, whatever it happens to be. And I'll, you know, make sure my son kind of wears that stuff too, because like, I don't want him walking around 
wearing a shirt with his elementary school name on it for you know a couple of yeah, reasons. Yeah, yeah. But then just going to be like, oh, I know you're from out of town. That gives somebody with bad intentions some sort of an advantage on making a profile on me to be able to scam me or con me or something like that. So that's something that I've just kind of done a little bit along the way with me and my family, especially when we're going out to a new area like you were just talking about and making sure that we look like we don't stick out terribly. You know, right. I think people will know, oh, this guy, I've never seen this person here before, that sort of thing. But yeah, just to kind of make it look like, you know, you're not wearing that clown suit in a room full of tuxedos and that sort of thing. Um, so why does... Why does the average person like me, why does the average family, what's advantageous about adopting gray man techniques into our daily lives? Well, it's, it's like you mentioned there, you know, if you're on vacation with your family, that's the ideal time to start thinking about these higher level ways to keep yourself out of danger. Like you said, if a scam, you know, a scammer is in the area and, and he's looking for people that are obviously from out of town obviously never been to new york city if that's where you're at or mm. never been to disney world and you know a guy standing outside of disney world with a, a lapel pin that has mickey mouse on it he's like these guys have never been here i'm gonna pretend i work for disney world mm -hmm. and, and you mm -hmm. know get 20 dollars from him for parking right uh, so fit, fit the fit the part um and like i said before people stop with gray man being clothes and behavior Go past that to awareness. So if you're going somewhere new, or even if you haven't done this sort of research for where you're at, know those dangers and know the capabilities that exist to mitigate them. So this involves going to community meetings about where you're, where if you if you live, say in Nowhereville, uh, North Carolina, go to the local town meetings where they do community policing and the the chiefs there. And you can find out about crime trends, what the bad areas are. Mm -hmm. Go to your PTA meetings. You know, this will help you learn more about, you know, are these teachers teaching my kids things I don't need to know? Um, is this kid a trouble kid that my kids should be hanging out with? Um, right. Learn, learn the high, the high crime areas where you're at. Um, is the, is the gas station nearby a place where drugs are sold? Um, so it's advantageous because knowing this extra stuff will help you avoid it, help you avoid putting your kid in that extra danger. And and why why not if we if we remember how to implement this stuff, let's let's do it, add that extra little la layer of protection for us. Right. And it's and it's not like some huge big lifestyle change. It's just one or two things here or there, right? It's not like you've got to go out and buy a whole new wardrobe and change how you do things and you know get a new car to blend in. It's just small stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. So um, give me kind of walk me through a realistic scenario that explains why the average parent needs to use some gray man techniques, kind of kind of cement this for people. What's something that could happen to us on a day that we would need to use this sort of information? Well, for one, let's say you live a couple blocks away from a gas station. You just moved to this house. And there's there's two options there. You're either going to be scaring your kid, don't go to the gas station, mm. you can't walk out on your own, it's too dangerous out there, without even knowing if it's too dangerous out there. So do that level of research and determine, you know, can my nine-year-old walk two blocks down the road to get a candy bar from the gas station, or should I keep him sheltered at home forever? If you're <laughs> aware of that gas station, you know, you know, you go there multiple times on your way to work, you get to understand the type of people that go there. Um, and like I said, you go to these town meetings, you find out, is this a place where drugs are sold? If it's a safe guy, if you're not seeing any extra thing and you understand your child, his responsibility level, let him walk to the gas station and get a candy bar. But if there's other threats there, don't don't let him go. You know, that's the sort of time where you stop him from doing that sort of thing. Um, and it's like, you know, maybe you are, let's say you are a, a Trump MAGA supporter, supporter, sorry. Um that's fine, but if that gas station is, you know, going to have people going to it that may not say have your same train of thought, mm -hmm. don't let your nine-year-old wear a MAGA hat to it because it's going to draw attention to him. Not that there's anything wrong with that, right? And not that we should have to hide everything of who we are. But if if it's an opportunity to keep your kid from getting into some confrontation, you know, take away those extra key things that like trigger people. Mm -hmm. um, so. For kids, you know, the gray man concept is a little different. That was just one little 
kind of loop in how clothing can apply to children as well. Um, but that's why I'm trying to stress with with your audience that it it, it goes beyond just clothing and just uh, the behaviorism. It's it's also about that knowledge of of what's around you and that that research of what's going on in that area. Right. And I think you would agree that sometimes, you know, like with the hat, with the clothing, we don't always need to broadcast everything that we're about. I'm good. I'll ask you this because I get this. I get this question frequently in my mm-hmm. direct messages on Instagram. As a matter of fact, there's one there waiting for me now. I've got to go answer. People, sl- people sliding in your DMs asking questions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the time. I get questions and I'm, I'm always happy to, to help people within a certain, you know, as long as it's reasonable. Yeah. But um, there are. And I, I know you see these too. The back windshield of the minivan that has all of the stickers on it with all of the kids' names, the sports that they play, all that sort of stuff. Tell me how you feel about what family, the information that families are given away with window stickers. Does that drive you crazy too? It does. Um, yeah, I'm glad it's not me with the window stickers on there. But it, it, like you're saying, the stick family decal, it tells you, oh, uh, the the father is in this picture. I've got two male kids and one very young uh, girl kid, and we have a, a very ba- a very small dog. So yeah. it it tells predators like, oh, they've got a little girl in their family, and their dog's not a threat. And you know, some people these these stick decals they even go further. Like they'll put the the man in a camo outfit. So mm-hmm. it tells, oh, the the husband's in the military. He's gone from this time to this time of the day. So it starts it starts telling the capabilities of the family, what what targets of prey there are. Um, and like I said, with the dog, you know, is there is this a big threatening dog or a little dog? And then all they got to do is pair that with other things, like you said, the a school mascot picture. Um, you know, a lot of kids, a lot of parents pick their kids up from school, and you have these uh, tags hanging in the, yeah. the rearview mirror. And mm-hmm. it's got a number on it. If, if if you have that little tag, you can get the kid. Like right. that's all right. that's all it takes at a pickup line. Mm-hmm. So keep those things put away. You know, put it up when you're picking your kid up, then put it away. Military folks who hang their dog tags on the mirror. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if things changed in the last couple of years, but when I was in, it was still a social security number on there. Mm-hmm. So all this goes back to OPSEC. Be careful of what you put on the back of your car. For yeah. one, you know, if people, even if you just cut off somebody and you upset them a little bit, you've given them information about you. Like if you put the sticker of where you work, they're going to call your work and complain like, hey, this guy cut me off. So yeah. don't advertise stuff like that. Absolutely. And uh, I actually saw this. Um, there was a car parked out of the guitar center one time and someone had put their work ID and hung it up on their rear view oh, yeah, mirror yeah, yeah. and it said department of the treasury. And you could clearly see his badge hanging off of it. And I'm like, bro, that what seriously? I mean, I'm pretty sure you had to go through training at your job to tell you not to do what you just did. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, because of all these other places. Anyway, the Department of the Treasury. So um, we've talked about this a lot and how important information is. How can we cultivate information so that we can keep our family out of trouble beyond just what we see on the news? Okay. Um, so like I said, knowing about your area, there, there's a thing called an area study. Mm-hmm. Now, in the military, we, at least in my field, we used a PMECPT. PT. That's Knowing about the the politics, the military, the economy, the the uh, social environment, um, information, infrastructure, physical environment, and time. So you don't have to get that in depth, but it kind of gives you an understanding. Like you should know a little bit about the politics of the area. You should understand the terrain, the weather. Um, so do a do a study of where you're at because it is important. Know your neighborhood. I mentioned the gas station concept earlier. But if you get if you if you make a routine, not like so much of a routine where like people can follow you and you know you gotta sure, worry about surveillance. Right, right. But make enough of a routine so you're making these bonds throughout your neighborhood. So if your kid gets into trouble, you can go to the arcade and like, hey, have you seen Mikey? Um, mm-hmm. No, he wasn't here today. Or yeah, he just left ten minutes ago. Um, if you make these bonds with you know different store clerks and people around the community. You've got extra people out there helping report if something's going on with you, you know, of certain dangers or with your kid. Um, 
So go to where your kids may hang out. Like I don't, everyone has different age level kids and I don't know where, right. what kids they're into these days, I guess, because I've got a, a younger one. Um, but making those bonds give you that extra intel that you wouldn't have otherwise. Um, and I already mentioned about going to PTA meetings and, and mm -hmm. things like that. But the information is vital because we, information is what we act on. Whether it's information we get online about the weather and making sure a kid has a raincoat um, or if it's information that we detect that guy's like reaching back behind in a certain yep. way. He's got mm -hmm. his face covered. Um, he's walking into the gas station. Um, he doesn't notice me because, you know, me and my kid are in the, here in the back and we're, we're not wearing anything obvious. There's someone over there that has an open carry. So he's going to look at that guy first as the first threat. And he's going to look at the store clerk as the next threat. So he's going to focus on those two people. Yep. He's pulling the gun out. Now he's going to rob this gas station. Me and my kid are going to slip out the back. But if you're not there picking up on these little things that are happening, if if you're yep. if you're buried in your phone, um, or even in the conversation, you're not going to see threats approaching. So it's that information you're picking up all around you in your environment that will help you avoid something as basic as being inside of a gas station when it's being robbed, helping you slip out the back. Maybe your kid's not there and you're seeing it unfold. You're you're concealed carrying, so you can react to it and stop the threat. Um, or you're close enough or you, you you're portraying yourself in a way where you're not a threat to the bad guy. So mm -hmm. he's not looking. He, he comes in, he sees you standing there. You look kind of meek or whatever, but he sees this other big guy, you know, this motorcycle guy. He's going to tell that guy to get down on the ground. So if, if you're not drawing that immediate attention to yourself, that gives you an extra couple of seconds to react, to not be on the bad guy's radar. Yeah. Me. Yeah, I like that. And it's really all about seeing the world around you and how that's going to affect your safety. And then just, I think also to what you're saying here is don't overreact. Like, don't panic. Yeah. Don't do those sorts of things. It's okay. And I liked in the scenario that you just gave me, it was you're going to get your kid and you're going to go out the back because that's what I think most families probably need to do. There is a time when violence needs to be used in self-defense, but I think most of the time it's we got to get our family out of here. And that's part of mental mapping of knowing where that exit is. So you just, you know, grab your kid by the neck and you're just like, all right, we're out this door and, and we're, yeah. we're moving on. Um, the scenario what obviously changes, you know, if it's a, a robbery at a gas station versus it's an active shooter at a school, like, mm -hmm. yeah, you still want to slip out the back, but if you have an opportunity to stop someone that you think is going to continue injuring others, that's when you you say nope. Today's the, the answer is violence. Yes, and you're right. And everything is it's always dependent on the dynamic scenario in which you're in. Yeah. Um. So yeah, a, and you're right. Now, one of the the things that I like to use, one of the tools that's in my tool belt that I use to keep my family safe is the Gray Man Brief, and that is uh, a great tool that tells you more about what's going on in the world that really isn't being covered, like. By the news media, it, it, you, you do see some stories in there that will get national coverage and things like that. But there's a lot of just good, solid information in there that you need to know about your local area and that things that aren't really being talked about. How important is that sort of I will call it grassroots information? It's a it's a very so the gray man briefing is that online news and intel service where um, we're partnered with them. So we send out updates daily. Mm -hmm. And it's everything from the Second Amendment update, like there's a new law coming out that's going to ban assault rifles. Or like today, I just noticed, um, if you guys haven't heard, there's uh, credit card companies like Visa, Discover, yeah. MasterCard. They, uh, under the ISO uh, merchant guidelines, they're going to start tracking um, purchases of firearms so that that information can be reported and stop mass shootings, they say. Um, but today, Discover, no, not Discover card. Visa and MasterCard just said they're going to pause it for a while because they got mm. too much pushback. Right. So it, 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 it's, it's helpful to be aware of these, these developments that are happening because that pushback just stopped these two major credit card companies from going forward with it for right now. Um, so it helps you be aware of stuff like that, of developments. Um, the briefing covers things like if there's civil and arrest planned, of course, it's not going to straight up say, hey, there's civil unrest planned for tomorrow down downtown. Right, exactly. It's going to give you trends of uh, protests that are happening. The last time there was a riot in this area, um, a lot's happening in Atlanta right now. And we had mm -hmm. a relative that went there recently. 
and I didn't realize that they were going there. And I'm like, hey, you might not want to go downtown tonight. Um, and, and you know, they were like, oh yeah, I already saw your briefing. We we're not in the downtown area, but uh, we'd already had the, the trip planned before this happened, so we're still enjoying the area. Just we're not downtown. We're not over where that event's happening. So yeah, the the briefing gives you information on news that that either mainstream doesn't cover or news that mainstream covers incorrectly with bias. Mm -hmm, um, and the, mm -hmm. the good thing about the briefing is they, they do it in two parts. So first of all, they give you the raw facts, which is things like, instead of saying a large group of protesters, large is kind of like, what does that mean? Is that a hundred? Right. So right. We, we straight up tell you there were 43 to 52 protesters yeah. um, on this date at this time, at this place, we don't use adjectives in the briefing. Um, so you know that the, the upfront data in the briefing is just, I mean, there's, you can't debate it. It's the facts. And right. then below it, we have the debrief section, which is that if there's anything opinionated, it would be in the debrief because that's our, our analyst analysis. Right. Um, they're kind of ex they're ex their experience placed into looking at the information and giving you kind of a, the so what out of it all. Yeah, very cool. So um, I know I get uh, the Gray Man brief from Telegram, and I actually have the Secure Dad has a Telegram channel, and I actually, I actually really like it. Yeah, because, we're probably on there. Yeah, and so um, and I and I appreciate that by the way, because I feel like it's a way that so the social media algorithm doesn't really get in the way, and it's always there for you when you're ready to go and take a look at it, and that's one of the things that I I appreciate getting information uh, that way because it's. It's not messed around with. I feel like 100% of the content that I push out on Telegram gets to people when they're ready for it. It's not like if I post something on Twitter at noon and you don't look at Twitter until like 8 p.m. that night, right, you don't yeah. get to see that message. And that's really valuable, important information. So I like how the Gray Man Brief comes out and I can just take a look at it when I'm ready to get that information. Of course, I have it pop up on my phone as to like making sure that something bad isn't going on in my area or that sort of thing. So I think that's a, a good method of delivery because it's it's not messed around with. Yep. And, and something I wanted to do for you guys, uh, for your listeners, um, Gray Man Brief wanted to provide your listeners with three months of a free trial. Um, so if you want to put, uh, I'll talk to you offline, but... Let's put a code there in your show notes so yep. people can get to it. Absolutely. And and that is that's a, a fantastic uh offer, by the way. Thank you. So, you know, Wes is saying here that um you guys will get the same kind of information that I get for about 30 days, excuse me, about 90 days. And uh you'll see how valuable it is. Um it's it's really good stuff. It's on a, a whole lot of different information that I think families need to at least be aware of so you can form your own facts and act on your own instead of being told by mainstream media, what you need to be thinking and what you need to be doing. So that's, that's awesome, buddy. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. No, no problem. Yeah. So one of my favorite things to talk about with folks is their everyday carry. Um, what are some of your must haves for your EDC? I, I love EDC. Like before I even got into all the stuff I'm into now, like I always like to have stuff in my pockets, and mm -hmm. um, so I guess you have a you have a baseline carry. Well, not so much talk about that. You asked my personal favorite EDC. Yeah, yeah. man, it, it's hard to say because it, it it changes every day. But my kind of more recent EDC is kind of like a it's almost like a plug for for us as well. We have a Sharpie marker mm -hmm. that um, the ink part's been removed, and it's got a G10 rod in there that's been sharpened. So the Sharpie marker is now a kind of a puncturing self-defense tool. Uh, so that's m my favorite. But I mean, I don't know, like I I'm pretty much capable of carrying a firearm everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I've got my CCW and other options available. Uh, but for those who don't or can't, whether because the law prevents you or whatever reason, mm -hmm. uh, it's good to think about other alternative defense tools like like a Sharpie with a right. little pointing device on it, like a NUC, like a, a self-defense defense pin of some sort. Right. But but yeah, I yeah. guess the Sharpie, my new Sharpie Sharpie. Yeah, and, and that's neat because it's, it's clever and it's well done. Uh, I think one of my favorite <laughs> things for um, everyday carry is a flashlight because I have the little Streamlight Pro and I've uh, praised it for a long time. 
And it's always good because I swear I use it about a dozen times a day. <laughs> and it, it gets to the point where something happens. Like my son drops something under a table at a restaurant and he's like, dad, can I borrow your flashlight? And I'm like, yeah, here you go, buddy. That sort of thing. And it's just those simple things like that, that you, um, as a prepared parent can be able to step up and do that sort of stuff. So you talked about a second ago, like your, your baseline carry and talking about changing it up, uh, depending on where you are. Talk to me a little bit about What's your baseline and when do you think you should change it up? So your baseline is um, some of the things is you're just going to have to carry with you anyway. This is your your car keys. This is your uh, your wallet, your mm -hmm. ID, your cash. Right. Uh, and then, of course, your phone. I think the phone is sometimes the most commonly carried EDC. Um, there's more people walking around with the phones than there are people with keys to a car, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that that's the baseline. But you, you want to go above that. So you want to add things, um, anything from pens, pencils, paper, notebook, your sunglasses, a handkerchief, a multi-tool, flashlight. But it needs to be dependent on what you're doing that day, what sort of task you you, you kind of determine I'm going to need to do today, um, the time of day. So if, it, if you're going mm -hmm. out in the day, sunglasses is a good option. If you're going out at night, ditch the sunglasses, get a flashlight. Um, but you you want to think through it tactically because I know a lot of people when it comes to EDC, especially a firearm, they're like, I'm just running to the grocery store. I'm not going to grab my gun. I don't need mm -hmm. my flashlight. Mm -hmm. I'm literally just going to get milk and bread. It, it, and when it becomes an inconvenience for us or something we can just push off, sure. Then then it's like, what good is all this planning, having all this gear, if we're just too lazy to take an extra step and drop this in our pocket? Yeah, you know, around or wherever. Um, so plan your day. Your EDC is going to vary throughout the day. You know, if you're going to a barbecue that night, bring a bottle opener. You'd be the cool guy, like someone's trying to open a bottle. <laughs> yeah, there hey, you I go. Got, I got one. It, you know, it's a it's an icebreaker. It's like you're helping someone out. Um, so EDC isn't always about like just saving a life. It's mm -hmm. it's just making the day easier. You know, if we can do anything in in the way the world is right now, as complicated as everything is, as many issues there are. If you can just do something to to make your life a little bit simpler, do it. But also think about the the concept that EDC could save your life. It it, mm -hmm. it it could do further than and not just having a gun to stop a threat. It's you know if you're going to carry a gun, maybe you should carry a, a tourniquet as well. If you're expecting mm -hmm. that sort of danger, yep. that means the danger could come to you or someone else. So be ready to save a life in that aspect too. Um, EDC is in your brain too. It's the you know do you know how to do CPR? Okay, mm -hmm. maybe I'm stretching there. Maybe that's not easy. I'm just trying to be cool, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I just took my first Stop the Bleed class. And I'll tell you what, man, like there's a lot of stuff that I knew already from things I had done in the past. But, you know, actually being in a group, being able to ask some questions, um, getting to, you know, put a tourniquet on my arm and hurting myself, you know, yeah. um, it it really does help you feel like you're prepared every day for what you're doing. And after that class, I've, I'm actually in the process of upgrading my um, emergency kits for my car right now and making sure that we have what we need to be able to do some sort of um, serious, you know, uh, triage work on, you know, hopefully never have to use that sort of stuff, but it's there yeah. for us if we need it, you know, and having that level of preparedness. So you've talked a couple of times about concealed carry. What are some tips that you have for people who are maybe new to it or who have been doing it for a while and they're just looking to change things up? What are some good concealed carry tips that you have? Well, the, the first obvious one is practice and be comfortable with it. Mm. If you're scared of it, you're, you know, that's, that's not a good start. So get right. unscared of it, be knowledgeable of how to, how to use a, a firearm and, you know, how to get on target, how to draw, get on target and stop a threat. But as far as the actual concealed carry itself, if you're new to it, and like I said before, if we're finding it to be an inconvenience or uncomfortable, we're not going to wear it, especially if we're just going out to the grocery store, which I would contend is, you know, where else are we going? Like if we're going to work, we're going straight to work at, you know, our office job. You know, we're probably going to have a better chance of needing to use your your handgun when you're just doing an error like a grocery store. Mm -hmm. But anyway, my tip would be when you first get it, don't just buy your holster on Amazon or from your favorite <laughs> company you found yeah. on Instagram. Not that I'm saying you shouldn't buy it from your favorite company you right, on Instagram, right, right. but go somewhere that sells holsters first, where mm -hmm. you can try on multiple ones that fit your, even if it doesn't fit your gun, at least you can try out the holsters and determine is inside waistband going to be good for me? 
Should I do ankles? Should I do it here? Should I do it here? Should it be mm -hmm. a leather? Should it be Kydex? And find a couple that are comfortable on you that you can, you can be like, I can walk around all day with this. Or even more importantly, I can sit down in my car and it not pinch mm -hmm. me. So find one that you know that's going to be comfortable for you. Because if it's comfortable, it's not if it's not an issue getting it on and off, then you're going to be like, yeah, why not just why not just conceal care today? Why not do it every day? Um, so that would be my tip. Go somewhere where you can physically try it on. Not that you have to buy it from that place. Um, right. But but yeah. Yeah, go out and get that experience and see what it's going to be like, that sort of stuff. I, I mm -hmm. like that. So, you know, man, as we wrap this up overall, like why does the... Why does the average citizen even need to be prepared? Why do we even need to make this our responsibility? It's kind of like they say you're you're your own first responder. Is that the saying, or you're the, you're the first? Yeah, first yeah, you're on your own first responder. You're right. your own first responder. Um, not to put distrust on you know other responding mm -hmm. abilities mm -hmm. out there, but you know, don't trust the government to save your life to give you food. You know, we saw Katrina. We're seeing East Palestine now. We saw the reactions, how long it, it took to get help to Katrina, um, how things are kind of not being told right about the pandemic, even about East Palestine and, uh, derailment. Um, so don't don't rely on someone else to save your your life and your family. Um, take those precautionary steps, you know, getting away from the gray man thing. Just know how to like I'm, I'm in North Carolina. We were affected by that uh, substation attack. Right, we right. Without power for over four days, and you know, for me, I was excited. Like, yes, I finally get to, <laughs> I finally get to practice all this, uh, all yeah. this stuff I say I know right. how to do. So we had a good time, but like, you know, I talked to my neighbors, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we lost everything in our refrigerator." Um, you know, this that. Take some extra steps to uh to, to plan how to mitigate issues from a power outage, um to whatever disaster is coming up, a cyber attack, an internet outage, you know, not that that would be the worst thing in the world would be without internet for a while. Right, true. Um, but don't don't trust on someone else to save the day. We, we talked about the concept of uh, being in the active shooter incident or at a gas station and a robbery happening, but be ready for simple things like a car wreck. Um, if you get knocked unconscious, does your kid know how to unlock your phone, how to yep. get to the phone yep. application how to dial 911. You know, the smartphones are completely different. Like you got to find an actual little button that mm -hmm. says phone. And I don't know, like I, I can't stand iPhones because it's like none of the buttons are ever organized. <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's just the people uh -huh. that use them, but like I would have trouble finding the phone app on my wife's phone. Yeah. Yeah. So make, I... make sure your kids know how to dial 911, how to find mm -hmm. it and unlock your phone, how to react when it when a car wreck happens. Like teach them on basic incidents that they're more likely to have to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, not that you can't talk about other things like a home right. invasion. Right. You can make training for a home invasion fun. You know, mm -hmm. schools do fire drills and all this stuff. And that kind of helps prepare them for active shooters at school. So do fire drills at home, do home invasion drills at home, um, depending on the, the comprehension and age level of your kid, be direct with them. Like, Hey, this could happen. Um, don't like, I mean, you can still make it a game, but don't like bounce around the idea like, oh, no, no one will ever come into the house. If anyone knocks right. at the door, it's right. only people we know. Be direct and tell them there are threats out there and train them for things like a home invasion. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You were talking you, you talked right about, you know, how to get your kids to call 911 if they need to. And I've shared this story on the podcast before, but. As a dad, you know, talking to another dad here, you'll appreciate this. I was working on a ladder in my garage one day, and my son bumped the ladder by like by accident, and it scared me to the point that I thought I was going to fall. And um, so I had that like adrenaline rush, and like you know how like sometimes when that happens, you you get mad. But I didn't get mad in this situation. I actually had a very smart reaction. I told my son, I was like, okay. Let's do this. So I laid down on the floor of the garage and I said, okay, I just fell off the ladder. What do you do mm -hmm. next? And he's like, well, I call 911. I was like, okay, go do it. And there was this moment of, oh, wait a minute. Like, how, how do I, how do I do that? So we walked through the whole process for me laying on the garage floor, like I'm injured or whatever. And I 
played the role of the 911 operator. We did we did the whole nine yards there, and he was able to walk through it and figure out how to do it. And I'm so glad you brought that up because that's what we need to do with our kids, just the, the basic stuff of being able to make sure that they can take care of themselves because we're not raising kids. We're raising adults, and that's yep. what we need to keep in mind. So I'm so glad that you said that. Yeah, and it's different. Like, you know, 15 years ago, you say – you, all you got to do is say, hey, if anything happens, call 911 on my phone. But now it's like the phones are different. Like it's mm -hmm. not just picking up something and typing in the three numbers. Um, it's, there's, I mean, even though kids are better at phones than us sometimes. Yeah, yeah. They're not so much better at making phone calls, maybe texting. Mm -hmm. So just think of the most primary level of stuff like the 911 concept. And I love the idea that what, what you did, like, let's go ahead and pretend this happened. And play it out. I, right. I, I need to start doing stuff like that. That's a, that's a really good idea because here's an example of an injury happening. How would you respond? Right. Right. And that's then make awesome. sure, you know, make sure you tell them, I mean, train them yeah. through the process if they can't figure it out, you know, don't watch them struggle, but you, you want to see what they're capable of doing, you know, what would they do? Right. Yeah. And we, that's the last thing we want to do is assume our kids know something that they don't. So we absolutely got to take this, take these opportunities. So Wesley, thank you so much for your time today, man. Tell, tell everybody where they can find out more about you and what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so our main website is super straps.com. Super S E is like super S U P E R E S S E. So super S E straps.com. That's where all our survival gear and, you know, we make uh, morale patches with gear built into the back of them. We do a whole decked out Altoids tin kit where we've yep. got like 30 different little tins that fit inside an Altoids tin. So our, our whole concept is to provide you with EDC and EDW, everyday carry and everyday wear um, options that aren't necessarily out there everywhere. And then, of course, our, our partner website, graymanbriefing.com. It's grayman with an A. Um, and that's where you can sign up for the news and intel service. It's $5 a month, $50 a year. And it's delivered via Signal app and Telegram app. So it's like getting a text message of the news. They filter out unnecessary news. So you're not going to keep getting pinged over and over throughout the day. You know, a lot of times they'll write something to be like, man, this is really good. The people need to know this, but it's already out there on CNN and Fox mm -hmm. News. Like we're not going to bug them with it. Um, and they also send out a weekly email with everything for the whole week goes to your email. So if maybe you're on vacation, you're busy, um, it can, Put the notifications on ignore and just catch up with that email. And like I said, for your for your audience, we'll put it in the notes, but uh, we'll give you a three month trial just so you can try it out. Unsubscribe, you know, after a couple of days, if you don't like it, if you do like it, stay, stay with us. Yep, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate everything that you're doing, buddy. God bless you in your future. Andy, we appreciate what you're doing, man. You're, you're helping directly to families, the people with, with children. Thanks for having us on, letting us chat for a while. I hope hopefully we can do it again sometime. Yeah, man, this has been fun. I appreciate that.